Hello and welcome back to another guide. My name is Saiken and we are today going to look at Jack the Lion's build guides. This is the second of four builds that I wanted to introduce to you. This time I come to you with an Overwatch uh, build, which is called Eagle Eye. Uh, the Eagle Eye build uh, is one that worked incredibly well for me. Uh, the advantage of it is it clearly will help you to dominate certain areas of the battlefield. It deals an incredible amount of damage and it will suppress uh, the enemy so that they will be very, very afraid to advance. Uh, the one that I built is also resource efficient, so you're not going to lose all of your ammunition. In order to demonstrate that, this is how the ammo for me in the end game looked like. You can see most of uh, the bigger ammunitions have way over a thousand, in some cases even more than 2000 shots available. So, Hoppite here is my e uh, IMP character and I just want to highlight uh, how the build works, going a little bit through the equipment that I put on him. I use specifically the desk squad armor on him, which uh, you could also substitute by a Kevlar armor uh, that has been increased by Weave. Both of them would allow 50% damage reduction and still retain free movement um, as an ability. So having said that, uh, the core of this build will be various uh, assault rifles. I will use the FN file here as an example. I've also had an AK and I had a G36, basically covering all three ammunition types. Uh, you can start with one and it is absolutely good enough. In terms of modifying the weapons, because that's part of the build as well, you want to make sure that you're increasing the Overwatch attacks for the FN Fell. Um, it has a light stock, some, others, uh, some other rifles have that as well. So that already increases the Overwatch attacks by one. Uh, you want to have, if possible, a wider Overwatch cone. Um, and the FNFL has one in the reflex side that also gives a moderate attack uh, bonus for interrupt attacks, which is going to be helpful. You want more uh, ammo size. Uh, the UV dot definitely helps because it will also apply it to all of the Overwatch shots. Increased range is helpful. Uh, the bipod is very helpful for more accuracy. Every single bit of accuracy helps in order to work through the recoil compensation. Uh, we do have a vertical grip uh, for more aim um, level. That, however, for Overwatch is typically not that relevant. And uh, moderate crit chance on subsequent attacks, uh, which indeed is relevant for uh, for Overwatch. So I'll use the F and file as an example. You modify whatever weapon you want. Um, it works with all of the assault rifles as long as you keep extra overwatch attacks um, as the main uh, source and any form of accuracy bonus on subsequent attacks will be helpful. Now let's jump into the build itself. A bit of the statistics around the build, um, Hoppert uh, was hired and issued 220 kills over his uh, career. This is not representing the full story. Hogbite potentially injured 600 enemies, and by injured I mean heavily, heavily, heavily injured. The build uh, does not necessarily need to kill immediately, it oftentimes just needs to de uh, debilitate uh, the enemies. It works better if you do have auto weapons and some sort of um, night ops uh, um, traits, but that's by no means required for the build. It just happens uh, to be very, very helpful. Marksmanship happens uh, to be very helpful as well. Strength isn't bad for recoil compensation. Of course, dexterity and marksmanship are relevant because they will determine um, your ability to hit with each of the shots. Agility will determine your amount of AP that you do have and overwatch will scale. You get more overwatch shots with more AP that you do have. Hawkbite ended up with six overwatch shots per round or respectively 12 overwatch shots per round if you look a bit closer to the perk. So how does the actual build uh, work and what did I do? If you want to do an overwatch build, you start with dexterity and you want to start with a character that has a reasonably high level of dexterity as in 90 plus dexterity because so much uh, works around the dexterity tree. Your first skill will be opportunistic uh, killer. Nothing to write home about, but enabling crits with interrupt attacks is great. One thing that is underappreciated is the automatic reload function. 
if Overwatch was used in the turn. That means you always start with a full magazine. No extra cost for 3 AP to reload your magazine. And actually, as long as your magazine size is high enough to uh, sustain all of the shots, you will be fine. So that's a good uh, talent to start off with. You won't be a killer at the beginning, but this is a solid start. Now, moving on to the next talent, which would be Fire Routine. You become inspired after you land two hits whilst in Overwatch. So that's not bad already, because uh, you just need to hit twice and you will get four AP. Those four AP transition not only into the next turn, but they will also ma make subsequent Overwatch attacks even better. It's a really good ability and uh, you will see that once you skill into it, your character, um, once they start to hit multiple enemies with their overwatch, will actually start with more AP every single turn. So for Hogbite, it almost triggers uh, triggered continuously, and he very often had 22, 24 AP at the end of the game. So that's good. Uh, so at this point in the game, you will uh, be able to crit and you will get AP, which is when you uh, skill into React the Fire, where you essentially make an additional interrupt attack with firearms whenever the enemy misses you during their turn. If you lay on the ground or are behind cover, that could easily happen. And that also means you will get additional interrupt attacks. Keep in mind how interrupt works. Let's shortly talk about it. Interrupt will trigger automatically when the enemy moves within your cone. So that's one interrupt attack. Inter uh, interrupt automatically triggers when they take a shot at you. That's the second um, automatic interrupt attack. And now interrupt also triggers when they are shooting at you and are actually missing you. So that's the third trigger right there, which means means an enemy, a single enemy that starts their turn in your cone, moves into cover and then shoots at you, triggers three times uh, from you. And all you need is enough Overwatch attacks to really, really make him regret his life choices. At this point, you will already see that the Overwatch will be uh, very, very strong. But believe me, it's nowhere near as strong as it becomes towards the end game. Next up, you skill into kill zone and this is a complete game changer because that allows you to make an additional bonus attack for every interrupt attack. Hold on there, let that sink in and really process it truly, what that actually means. I just gave you an example of three overwatch attacks that are triggered by the same enemy. Well now it is six overwatch attacks. Two when they move the first time, two when they start shooting and two when they miss you. Uh, that is oppressive to say the least. Typically, with a good FN, uh, FN foul or a good AK that is modified and you're laying on the ground, after two shots, they are typically dead. Uh, so after two bursts, uh, sometimes after three, definitely after four, and it never really comes to five uh, and six, which is great because you don't even take damage in return. So what that does is you will turn yourself into an absolute killing machine. Two overwatch attacks when an enemy moves are guaranteed and then two further overwatch attacks when they shoot are also guaranteed. Which means I have not seen a single enemy across the entirety of my playthrough that as long as Hogbite had uh, overwatch attacks left over that was actually allowed to shoot him. They all died before that happened. So this in itself is already oppressive but wait for it, there is more. Now, you could argue when you're overwatching, you're sometimes uh, laying in the grass and you're in the open. So what do I do after the mid game when the enemies are actually starting to be a bit stronger? Well, I have the right um, answer for that as well. For starters, you take 20% more hit points. Hogbite is rocking a solid, I think, uh, 118 hit points at the moment. So really, really beefy in itself. But wait for it, there is even more. After you take that, I would suggest you take Vanguard, because when you end your turn outside of cover, which Overwatchers tend to do, you gain 15 grit, uh, so 15 temporary hit points every single round, and it does not stop. It will cap at 30 uh, maximum, but after two rounds in combat, Hogbite essentially had 150, almost 150 hit points, and uh, whenever a a stray shot would uh, would grace him at best. He would uh, take a few hit points, temporary damage. Next round, they would already be filled up. So you are becoming a massive tank. On top of that, for the occasional sniper shot, 
How about making another interrupt attack when firearms are dealing damage against you? Sounds good? Damn right, it is good because it's two overwatch attacks. So uh, Hogbite would do two additional overwatch attacks for every time he's hit. Granted, uh, the return uh, reactive fire is better than the revenge fire because they more often miss than they hit, but it's still not a bad uh, talent per se. And then uh, kind of the crown jewel here, hold position. Whenever you overwatch, you are getting 50%, up to 50% damage uh, reduction based on health. So he would uh, need a little bit more health to make it 50 instead of 49%. And that stacks with armor multiplicatively. It doesn't go way towards uh, the end of your turn when your overwatch is done. You still had overwatched and therefore count as overwatched. Which means Hogbite with his current armor has a 75% damage reduction for anything that doesn't penetrate armor and a solid 60-ish damage uh, reduction for anything that pen uh, penetrates armor. Well, a little bit less than that 55%, but you get the point. Hold position is not bypassed by, uh, mm, uh, by armor reduction. He's just not taking damage whilst lying there. He is an absolute force to be reckoned with. To then kind of uh, mm, uh, give it a little bit uh, more, uh, more oomph, you can skill flanker at any uh, point in time. I use it literally as the last one because the build is not necessarily um, there to deal the most damage overall. But flanker with the 15% uh, solid damage increase, um, which will happen very often, just helps you to kill more enemies. And that's really it. The build is oppressive in nature. I cannot praise it enough. It's potentially one of the strongest builds that I've played with and it worked incredibly well. Let me show you a couple of examples. Mind you, the ones that I'm showing you are all done with assault rifles. Uh, I should say that the build definitely works with machine guns. The only difference between machine guns and assault rifles is when you use it with machine guns, the enemies just flat out die immediately. You, are, you can delete up to six enemies immediately just right there and then. Um, but it takes a little bit more ammunition. So what I really did was a compromise with assault rifles to, yeah, just get down um, enemies uh, most of the time. And the other ones were so badly injured that the uh, stragglers were picked up by the others. Good. Enjoy the uh, game footage and let me know what you think about the build. All right, let's join some gameplay. So typically when you're stealthing later in the game, you will see all of the different goons. Hogbite here is just going to lay down. He is uh, starting an overwatch cone and then uh, you want to split, uh, split up and let the enemies start. Um, get your melee character a little bit in order and you can see here, first salvo enemy immediately died right away. Um, from here on, you can easily clear it up. The en all, all of the other enemies didn't even want to move. I'll give you another example of just how oppressive it is with multiple enemies. Good, the next bit of gameplay that we're going to see is a multi Overwatch. Uh, we're again moving closer to the enemy, are hiding before the enemy can see us. And then um, Hogbite is just going to set up that beautiful cone here. Mind you, we're currently not a prone. So you can watch the build perform with just a normal kneeling position. Five enemies, we got two solid shots immediately, uh, getting him down to ultra weak. Uh, the second one uh, takes two shots as well, almost dead. So nearly uh, dead, both of them. The next one uh, is taking two, yet again, almost the dead. Keep in mind these are veteran enemies with 8200 hit points each. The next one um, is taking two short salvos and just goes down and the one behind him then goes down as well. So you're really left at that point with uh, three heavily, heavily injured enemies that uh, you could use a single grenade in order to clean up all three of them or just walk there with good old Igor and uh, slash them. Point being, the uh, build is ultra oppressive. It works very well. And if you're finding yourself uh, in the need of some more uh, cover for the overall battlefield, this build is the way to go. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, what you've seen. Let me know how, what your opinion about a good old Overwatch build is and see you in the next episode. Bye bye.